Good morning, welcome to the webinar today, Laptops and Vehicles. Uh, my name is Sarah Snabel and I'll be the presenter today. So uh, I work with Pro Ergonomics. I'm actually one of the co-owners and I just thought that uh, I might start out today just telling you a little bit about Pro Ergonomics. I know we often have a lot of uh, returnee webinar attendees and then some of you are always new as well. So just to give you a little bit of an introduction to Pro Ergonomics and what we're all about uh, as well as how the webinar works and and whatnot. So um, Pro Ergonomics, we are all registered kinesiologists. The partners are all certified professional ergonomists and we're a growing team. We, we now are a staff of five um, and, and really we focus on ergonomics. We are ergonomic specialists so um, we're trying to help reduce those strains and sprains in the workplace whether it be through a risk assessments, through training, um, whatever the option might be. Um, and Really, we try to, to focus on that team approach. So between the five of us, we've worked in several different industries. Um, and that's kind of our claim to fame is that, you know, we, we always pool our resources behind the scenes to make sure that our customers are getting the absolute best service. So for today's webinar, laptops and vehicles, is there an ergonomic setup? So just kind of starting with that, um, we're just talking about mobile devices really and kind of why we chose to even go this route with a webinar topic. Um, there's so many <laughs> mobile devices on the market these days. You see them everywhere, um, whether it's a laptop, a smartphone, a tablet, uh, everything seems to be more and more with these quote unquote smart functions. Uh, we can tap in online just about anywhere. Um, and from different research, uh, if, you, if you do Google searches for example and you try and see like how many people have a laptop, how many people have a smartphone, like the numbers are astounding. Almost as many people have some kind of a smartphone or a laptop than they do a car um, for example. And uh, in particular, one article I read said was noting that more than two-thirds of employees in Canada are actually doing some of their work outside of the office, so outside of that traditional brick-and-mortar office buildings. And, uh, you know, millions of people, like over 10 million people, really are doing this type of work where they're not working uh, fully in an office building. Uh, it also noted that smaller companies tended to be more likely to have mobile workers or people who work away from the office compared to larger um, larger companies. And uh, you know, I try to think about you know why why are they doing that and and what can we expect more in the future? But if you really think about it, mobile dev devices, the laptops, the cell phones, tablets, everything is becoming more affordable. So because they're becoming more the norm, um, they are, they're becoming more affordable, they're more accessible, wireless networks, like being able to connect online when you are not in an office or when you're not directly at home, um, that's also becoming more accessible. So it's giving organizations more opportunities to allow their employees to work off-site and then as a result they're becoming more and more comfortable in letting their employees work off-site. Um, you know, and this can actually be a smart choice for some companies when it comes to like high density cities for example where traffic is really bad. If you think of how long it takes some people to commute especially in those rush hour morning and afternoons or evenings, um, this could actually allow employees to be a little bit more productive and I think that's probably another factor why we're seeing a lot more um, working away from the traditional office. So you know you're not necessarily late first thing in the morning because you didn't have to deal with the morning rush hour and you're not you know watching the clock or stress trying to get out of work at a specific time because you're worried about that rush hour traffic at the end of the day. Now there could be several different factors on why but I think really accessibility is is becoming the, the bigger issue on, or the positive or the reason really why we're seeing more of this type of work and I think it's only going to get more common to be honest. Um, kind of just watching the way the trends are going now. For today's webinar my kind of goal in going through this today is to talk a little bit about mobile offices, you know, who's using them, what does this mobile office look like, um, and then talk about some of the issues that we might see, and you guys can provide your comments and feedback on what you're seeing in your workplace as well. I'm always intrigued to hear that, and I can address any questions that you might have, and then we'll we'll talk about some of the ergonomic solutions um, or considerations, right, because really I think what we're going to find here uh, is that, you know, I'm not really a fan of using a laptop as a sole computer in any application and let alone in a vehicle. Uh, I'm not sure you really can get an ergonomic setup. I, 
I really don't think you can. And so it might be just some considerations as opposed to solutions. So when it comes to a mobile office, actually, you know, when I when we come up with doing these webinar topics, uh, sometimes it's because it's a topic that I'm interested in learning about, and most often that's because somebody has somebody, several, some clients, some people, our, our webinar attendees, have put some ideas in our head. They've had some questions. Hey, have you heard of this? Hey, could you tell me more about this? It'd be great if you did a webinar on this. So mobile offices was, or working on laptops and vehicles, was something that we've had a couple of different requests for. Um, and so recently I just did a Google search. I typed in mobile office, and the pictures that came up actually I thought were quite entertaining. Uh, these pictures here are examples of a mobile office. However, I don't know that they're necessarily the more common way that we are seeing laptops in vehicles. So this type of a setup is, are like cargo vans, for example, where they've actually got a desk or um, I don't know, like the one on the right, the guy looks like he's on a, a train or a plane, um, but that's actually a retrofitted, um, I think it's a Mercedes Sprinter van, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you can check out those websites, um, just that they had some interesting pictures. So anyways, these are some of the fancy offices, and I think this is definitely for some types of work, but I think for the most part, the type of work that we're seeing when people are working on laptops and vehicles is where the laptop is actually mounted up front. So something more like this picture. Um, and we see so many different people using laptops or tablets in vehicles now. Um, I mean, smartphones come with us everywhere. But in particular, I'm noticing them a lot more with emergency responders. It's a great way for them to have access to maps, to um, different information for about the scene that they're responding to, the building. You know, it's it's rate right all built in there. They don't have to deal with paper. Um, it helps make them more efficient. I'm seeing it a lot more in um, like utility drivers, for example, utility workers. Um, I did some work previously a few years back with a different, um, when I worked with a different company uh, and it, for the Electrical Safety Authority. And they were an example of people who, they never, they didn't come into the office first thing in the morning. They would start from home and then they'd work on their laptop in the day as they needed to make notes. You're seeing that a lot more now too with like inspector or auditor type jobs, with sales jobs, um, delivery drivers will have some type of a computer in their uh, vehicle as well to kind of help track their deliveries when they've dropped things off, where they're going. A lot of municipalities as well I'm noticing are switching uh, and trying to incorporate more tablets and laptop devices in there, like the enforcement officers, for example, um, so they can track what they've seen out in the field uh, while they're out in the office, or out in the field, sorry, as, a, as opposed to waiting until they get back in the office. The whole idea, I think, is that it's trying to make them more productive uh, or less forgetful. They don't have to do as many handwritten notes. So pros and cons to all of these workers who are, are working more from a mobile office. And maybe you have some others, maybe specific to your industry, um, who are working out in the field, but these are some of the areas where I've seen them more and more. I mean, even the construction and the trades where they haven't really used computers in the past at all, um, and I know a lot, a lot of them now are, are switching to more of a, a tablet style for getting their work orders, documenting their notes for work orders, and closing them out. So finding it really interesting that um, more and more people are using computers and kind of or, or computer based applications right and they're actually switching they're kind of jumping they're not ever actually getting to that desktop computer right some of the trades workers may have never really had to use a computer in their 20 or 30 years in the profession and all of a sudden here they are now having to track everything on a tablet so here are some of the the common setups that i see in vehicles so uh, one is you just bringing your laptop with you, uh, setting it on your lap and, you know, trying to get a bit of work in while you're sitting there. Maybe maybe this is because you don't need to bring your laptop or do work in your vehicle as often. Uh, I'm not sure the case specifically, but this is one application. Another application might be where you have it mounted on a docking station. So then you can take your laptop in and out of the vehicle, right? So you can set it up at your desktop computer, um, bring it into your car, set it on your mount, and, um, and work from it in your vehicle. And then the third application, really, that we're talking about is something where it's built into the vehicle. So this is typically more of a tablet style or, you know, even a lot of the um, vehicles these, day, these days are... Um, 
they have those touch screens built in. So those are kind of the ones that, that I'm thinking of, right? You know, it's built right into the computer. You can see in this picture, there's actually a couple different computer screens. So in this case, one is actually the truck operation, the one on the far right. And then the smaller screen kind of in the middle of the picture there is the tablet more for map, uh, for the mapping their routes. So those are kind of the three different styles. One is like just using a laptop, bringing it in and out. One where you have that docking station or the mount in your vehicle where you can bring the, the laptop in and out or maybe it's fixed, um, built right into the vehicle. Regardless of the system, um, all of these types of systems, how you integrate it, how you install it, uh, can have some challenges. So sometimes it takes up space well it definitely takes up space but sometimes it interferes with the space and your ability to access your control panel so you can see in all of these applications here all these pictures um, it's kind of blocking some of your access to the buttons like whether it be your radio or the buttons on your on your dash uh, even your cup holders the gear shift there's different things to consider in how you're going to mount these in the different type of vehicles that you might be using Sometimes it can impede on the, the driver space. I mean, that's definitely, you don't want it to do that. You don't want it to ever interfere with the driver as they're actually driving. And then if that's the case, as you try to shift it over, it can impede with passenger space. So another variable to consider if this is going to be your method of, of work. So sometimes it can comp compromise your passenger space and their posture. And then uh, depending on where they're mounted as well, something to consider is whether or not they're going to affect or impede the function of an airbag. Um, you also want to make sure that they are securely mounted. You don't want it to be a projectile if you ever needed to stop or break suddenly. Um, even turning, right? Like you don't want it to be sliding around. You could damage your laptop even if it's not, uh, you know, dropping a laptop on the floor uh, isn't going to be so good for the longevity of your laptop and all your data that's stored there. So in addition to these safety issues, these are just kind of a couple to touch on. We haven't even touched on the ergonomic complications. So when you actually try to use the device when it's in your car or in your truck, uh, that can be, you know, another can of worms. So what I thought we could do is talk a little bit about kind of driving and the vehicle on its own as well as then talk about the laptop. So breaking it out. So we're talking about vehicle, laptops and vehicles. So first let's talk about the vehicle. For those people who who are working um, in a mobile office, so they're working from their laptop in their vehicle for like maybe it's their primary office or maybe it's just a couple days a week. Um, they're probably spending a lot of time driving and we've done some webinars on driving ergonomics so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail but really what you need to know um, is that driving on its own has enough injuries or enough injury risk as is. So in the United Kingdom they've actually come up with a term repetitive driving injury. I haven't heard that too much here in Canada but it is kind of interesting and when you look up that you look up, you know, what is a repetitive driving injury, it's often injuries related to foot cramps, low back pain, stiff neck, shoulder pain, and without even having to do any research, I mean, many of you know, if you spend a long time in the car, whether it be that you stuck, you're stuck in traffic, or maybe you're doing a long commute, you're going to visit family, you're going on a road trip, it's, it, it's almost normal. You, you almost expect that you're going to be uncomfortable towards the end of the trip, right? Your back kind of story, sore. Uh, maybe your shoulders or your neck are sore, so you get out and stretch. Uh, but for some people, they're doing a lot of driving just for their job every day. Um, and so, unfortunately, with the vibration in the vehicle, the length of time that's spent in the vehicle, the postures that they're in, maybe they're on really bumpy terrain, maybe they're stuck in traffic and that's causing a lot of stress or tension. All of these issues can com compound and and uh, potentially lead to an injury. I mean, hopefully, hopefully it's not. Hopefully we can always catch these things. Um, but this is just talking about driving on its own. So driving has some challenges and some injury risk on its own. And we look at laptops and tablets just on their own. Um, personally, I'm not really a big fan of laptops and tablets for using them as your main computer. It is impossible to get perfect posture when you're working on a laptop, right? So even if you are working at a desk um, and you're working on your laptop, you tend to look down at the screen. So you're typing on the keyboard, you feel like your shoulders and your wrists are in a good posture, but now you've got to look down at the screen. 
So if you do the flip and you try to raise your screen up so that your neck's in a good posture, likely the keyboard's going to be too high or it might be at a weird angle. So you're not getting very good shoulder and wrist or elbow postures. Um, so there's not really a happy medium when it comes to working on a laptop. The best way really is to try to position your laptop in a way that you are working more like a traditional desktop computer. So you've got a separate screen and a separate keyboard. So whether you use your laptop screen and you plug in an extra keyboard, um, maybe that's one option. Or you are just using your laptop as a docking station or like as a hard drive basically, right, and plugging in those external accessories. I mean, that's really the way that you're going to get the best posture. So on their own, laptops and tablets for that matter as well, you can't really get great posture when you're working on those. So when we talk about putting them together and working on a laptop in a vehicle, <laughs> I think really we've just magnified some of the problems. So when you're working in a vehicle, um, more often than not, the if you've got it mounted in your desk in your vehicle, it's probably going to be towards the, the right of the steering wheel, right? Kind of on the passenger side. Maybe you can take it off and put it in your lap, but that's going to be, I'll just flip back, like working on your lap is as this picture is here, right? He's looking down at the screen, uh, balancing it on his leg. Same type of thing is going to happen when you're in the vehicle. Um, even when you have it mounted, for example, we've got, you know, our, our major concerns really are for the back and the neck. So you're twisting, you're twisting the back and the neck really to try to view the screen as well as to use the keys. So um, like you're even, maybe you're leaning to the side. It depends on how close you can even get the laptop to you. So you've got some twisting of the neck, twisting of the back, leaning as well, uh, possibly even hunching forward. It, again, it depends on uh, maybe you're trying to see the screen. I don't know how big the screen of your laptop is in your vehicle. I mean, you're maybe you're not mounting your 17 or 18 inch laptop screen in your lap in your vehicle. Uh, it's likely more of a, a netbook or a notebook type of style, so a smaller screen. And then with your neck too, you're, you're looking down. So you've got twisting to the side, usually to the right side, as well as looking down to look at that screen. And then depending on how your laptop is mounted as well, um, you might have some awkward shoulder postures when it comes to using the keyboard and the mouse for that matter, but let's just talk about the keyboard. So you're twisting, you end up with a little bit, um, you can see in this picture, uh, some contact stress with the elbow on the center console and maybe it's a cushy surface, but regardless, that can impede blood flow. So it's, you know, ideally you want to have free range of motion. You want to be able to move those arms around. And if you look at his left arm, uh, that looks like it's a little bit more outstretched. So he's kind of twisting, crossing his body, as well as reaching in front to access that keyboard. So that can be some concerns to the shoulder as well as the upper back as well. And, uh, you know, maybe for some people who are more of that hunt and peck typer, you know, the ones with one finger each hand, maybe the shoulder postures aren't as big of an issue because it's the same type of posture they might be in when they, regardless of whether they were twisted in a vehicle or not, uh, maybe their shoulder postures aren't as bad. But um, anyways, then they're a slower typer as well. But this is probably more of a concern for the person who is the touch typist. And then we've got um, wrist postures too for the height of the keyboard as well as the mouse. I think a lot of times when people are using the laptop in the vehicle, they're using that touchpad that's built into the laptop. It just makes the most sense. You don't really have space or the security really, like where are you going to put an external mouse. Um, I have seen some people try to plug one in and put it on the center console and use the mouse there. Not a bad idea. Not really great for like shoulder uh, postures as well. You end up kind of craning your shoulder backwards a little bit um, and then it depends on the surface as well of that console whether or not you get good um, I don't know would it be reception of the mouse or good feel you want to make sure the mouse act, recept, I guess reception right where you've actually moved the mouse and it moves the cursor proper so many mouses these days you don't really need mouse pads anymore but uh, using it on a console you'd have to be careful and then, um, again, because you don't really, typically don't have a ton of adjustability when it comes to these mounts, um, it, possibly the keyboard and that touchpad mouse are a little too high or too low, so you're not getting very great shoulder postures in that sense as well. So, and then, uh, I mean, let's talk about 
we could add in a little bit about temperature as well when we're talking about working in the vehicle. Um, for the most part, I think if you're working in the vehicle, you've got a vehicle that's decent enough that you've got heating and air conditioning, right, unless it's broken. Um, so, you know, as long as you don't have the air conditioning too cold, cold shouldn't be a factor. Uh, but when our muscles are cold, that can cause extra tension. So just things to keep in mind. Not really... Um, it's not really possible to get good postures when we're talking about working on a laptop, laptop, let alone working on a laptop in a vehicle. So what is that ideal placement when we are talking about um, a laptop in a vehicle? Um, is there a better spot than, than that traditional, you know, what we've seen here where it's mounted uh, to the right of the, the driving or the steering wheel? Is there another spot? Um, should we be doing something different? And there's actually not a lot of research out there. There's one study in particular that I've seen several times. It's probably the only study that I've really seen actually where there's been some research put into it and it was done for some a utility company. It was done in the States but it was measuring the impact of the laptop location and the data input method. So whether it was using a touch screen or a keyboard. Before I get into kind of talking about this study, um, what I will really stress is evaluate your need for a laptop in a vehicle. Before we even talk about where we're going to put the laptop in the vehicle, I think it's really important to to go through and determine, do I really need my employees or me, myself, to work in my vehicle? Um, because I know that I can't really get good posture and without even having to look at studies, I mean, we know that working in awkward postures, um, working in static postures, so not moving a whole lot. Uh, we also know that driving, where you're stuck in the, the where you're not moving a whole lot, you're sitting for a long period of time, all of those already increase our risk of injury. We know that separately working on a laptop doesn't have good postures, so that can increase our risk of injury, and now we're combining that together. So really, evaluate the need for a laptop or a tablet in your vehicle. If you really think it's going to make your workers more productive, if you really think that it's necessary, then we're going to move on here and say, okay, where are we going to put it and how are we going to install it to make sure that it's the safest for our employees um, and that they're able to work in as good of posture as they can. So that's where we'll get into reviewing this study. So here is uh, the, the different um, locations, the, the laptop locations that this study looked at. So in picture A, so this is kind of a weird layout here, so picture A, bottom right corner there, this is where they have a passenger seat mounted unit. So it's basically taking up the whole de the passenger seat. This is a Typically a low cost option, um, it's just tethered to the seat with a seat belt, the laptop is placed on that desk, so it makes it super transportable, right? you can take your laptop in and out of the vehicle. So that was the first option they looked at. Picture B, that's your top right, that's where they had a post or a, um, a yeah, you know, post mounted in front of the passenger seat with a docking station. So in this case, um, it's a little further forward um, and there's limited adjustability. They've noted particular in this study that this is one where there's limited adjustability. It's just installed on a post. C is where you have the screen mounted to the dashboard. Um, and in this case, so this would be like a lot of your tablet usage, uh, something where it's not built into the vehicle, but you've, you've kind of built it into the vehicle. You've added it on after the fact. And in this case, they've actually got a keyboard placed on the center of the steering wheel. Personally, I haven't actually seen this where they've had a steering wheel mounted on or a excuse me, a keyboard mounted on the steering wheel, so I think that's an interesting concept. Usually when it's a touchscreen tablet, it's just a touchscreen, so but anyways, keep in mind in this study they had a, a keyboard mounted to the steering wheel. And then option D, the picture at the bottom left, is where they had it mounted, um, again a post, but it had two articulating arms and a docking station, so you could bring your laptop in and you could move it forward and back as well as up and down, and the participants in the study were given the option to place the computer wherever they felt most comfortable, given the constraints of the vehicle obviously, but uh, what they found was that all participants chose to place the laptop near the right side of the steering wheel, so as they have pictured here. So that's kind of the, the study here, and I mean Really, um, I don't know, maybe this is really obvious, which one do you think was the best? Conclusion, locations A and B, 
right, which you can see, had the worst body postures. You can see, it's pretty obvious, their arms in both cases are outstretched fully, really, in front of them um, and twisted. Right, so in the in picture A in particular, she's twisted a full 90 degrees. In picture B, she's twisted maybe 45, 60 degrees. So that definitely has some increased muscle strain, as opposed to the steering wheel um, mounting option. So in C and D, so C is where you're just reaching to the the touchpad. Uh, with that interesting keyboard mounted onto the steering wheel or having the laptop positioned as close to the steering wheel as possible. So C and D definitely scored a little bit higher. Um, they, I mean, and again, maybe this kind of goes without saying, but leading increased muscle fatigue, especially um, when you're twisting, and they actually found that it was within 10 minutes. So within 10 minutes of using the laptop in these awkward postures, like A and B, for example, um, they were finding muscle fatigue. So obviously, muscle fatigue, that increases the risk of low back pain, it increases the risk of shoulder pain, um, and in both cases, you're ris increasing your risk of injury, right? Those musculoskeletal disorders, the strains and sprains. So sometimes it might be more costly. I mean, if you're gonna have somebody work in their laptop, maybe you think, okay, well, would just go with the more cost-effective option. You kind of choose a, a lower cost mounting option. Uh, but if you are going to go with a go with a mounting option in the vehicle, it's better to go with something that's a little bit. I mean, it doesn't have to be more costly, but sometimes more adjustability is more costly, um, and maybe even a more complex installation. Maybe it's not something you can just do by yourself. Maybe you'd, maybe somebody has to come in and do it for you. Um, but really, that is going to help reduce the risk of injury, right? If you can get an option like C or D, for example, um, more adjustability, being able to bring that laptop closer to you or being able to allow some adjustability for up and down height, definitely that would be a bonus. So, I mean, really, when we're talking about all of this stuff, we talked about whether or not we even need to have a laptop. And then we want to talk, too, about how we're using the laptop. So really, it's going to be, like, the more that businesses are really trying to, we're trying to become more productive, I guess is the word, um, or we're trying to be more technology friendly, um, a lot more people are wanting to work outside of the office, um, really I guess it's about them, they're almost like decentralizing, right, a lot more people are being able to work out of the office, it's going to be important to see who's going to develop the most uh, user friendly and safe portable computer. Um, I don't think we're anywhere close to that, but you know, taking these steps right now, um, to make sure that we're assessing how we're using the vehicles and whether they're actually needed is going to be important. So again, not all workers who use laptops or tablets in their vehicle are going to use them the same. It depends on what information they are having to input. It depends on um, what programs they might be using. So that's where you're going to want to think about this uh, in terms of what adjustability or what location, what option you want to mount that laptop or tablet in the vehicle. So if your computer tasks are mostly visual, so maybe you're looking at more pictures, maybe you're not doing a lot of typing because it's just really quick, you know, I'm entering in a couple like one, one, enter, you know, maybe that's the, the maximum of my keyboard input, then I'm probably going to want to focus more on the neck posture. So maybe having the screen a little higher. So maybe I want, maybe it doesn't really, uh, maybe I don't really care a whole lot about what height the keyboard's at because the, having the height of the monitor um, in line with my eye height is much more important because, you know, I'm looking at the screen more often than I'm typing. But if your tasks are more focused on keyboard input, so maybe you have to write a lot more notes, um, or even if it's a mixture of keyboard input and visual tasks, you're going to want to focus more on those wrist postures, or and even the shoulder postures, so really what height your keyboard or your input, de input device is. So uh, that keyboard that was mounted to the steering wheel is kind of an interesting um, idea. It's not really a far reach. I don't really like the angle of it. I don't think that that's going to give you very good wrist postures, but maybe this is where you're going to really uh, focus on getting a mount 
that has an articulating arm that slides forward so the user can try to bring that laptop closer to them. Um, when I did that work with the Electrical Safety Authority, that was what they did have. They had a, a mount that could go up and down as well as slide forward and back and it pivoted as well, adjusted in the angle. And then they could lock it into the position that they want. And, and what I did find with the a few of the employees that I did meet with, um, they were using those adjustments. So they weren't necessarily using them every day because they each had their own assigned vehicle, but they were able to show me how it adjusted and told me that they had taken the time to set up the adjustments so that it worked for them. Um, and in some cases, because I looked at several different vehicles, the mounting was a little bit different. So um, in a van, for example, he didn't have to move the, um, he didn't have to move the laptop much at all through the day whereas in I forget which type of vehicle it was now uh, it was more of a more of a, it wasn't a fully car but it was like an, a small SUV um, and so he would actually slide the laptop close to him when he was typing and then when it was time to drive he would adjust it and slide it a little over the, out of the way um, just so that he had a little bit more elbow room and, and whatnot when driving so just some interesting things to note so again, you want to assess the use of the laptop. So how are your people going to be using the laptop? Okay, so I'm just going to check the questions here to see. Um, is, okay, great. So, uh, sorry, I'm just reading through the questions here. What are your thoughts on switching from laptops to tablets in fleet vehicles? Great. Okay, let me answer that question right now. So in fleet vehicles, if you are already using laptops and you're wanting to switch to tablets, I think actually what I have just mentioned is probably um, the first step that you want to do. So laptops to tablets, why are you wanting to switch to tablets, right? What are they doing? Um, it might be... It might be a better switch, but without knowing the tasks that they're doing, um, I can't be certain that that is going to be the best the best thing. Um, it definitely tablets are lighter; they're easier to transport around, so it's less cumbersome. But if they're doing a lot of typing, a tablet might not be the best option. If you've got pre-programmed software, you know where you're doing a lot of drop-down menus and whatnot, and and you know working on a touch screen primarily is doable then definitely switching to a, lap, a tablet might be easier. It might improve some postures too because uh, now you're not having, you could actually lift the tablet out of the mount or however you got it mounted in the vehicle and hold it directly in front of you. So there could be some pros um, to switching to tablets. I'm just going to look for the next question. Oh, any things to look or con uh, look out for or consider before making the change related to tablet use, positioning, and mount? So what should we consider before we're making the switch? Which is great. So I didn't see this question before, but I think that I've already kind of answered that as well. And I'm going to continue to answer that actually um, in the next few slides. So again, you, you're really wanting to look at the types of tasks that your workers are doing. And then we also want to um, think about um, the mount itself, you know, what's going to be safe. So when it comes to mounting arms, um, I am not necessarily endorsing any one brand over another. I know that there are several on the market. What I would say is to make sure that you are investing in a docking station or a mounting arm that is of decent quality. It's going to be super important from a safety perspective as well to make sure that that laptop or that tablet is bolted in nice and secure. You definitely don't want it to become a projectile if you were to stop suddenly or turning a corner, and you don't want to damage your laptop if it falls. So that's of utmost importance. Um, and then when it comes to an ergonomic standpoint, having more adjustability is going to be really important as well. Um, and again, the type of adjustability that you're looking for is going to depend on the task. So, I mean, if you, uh, I mean, more having more adjustability sometimes is better than for everybody, even if they're not always going to use it, because then you've got the option. But in particular, I like the mounting arms that have the ability to go up and down a little bit in height, as well as slide forward and back so that you can move the keyboard or the, the screen closer to you and then further away from you when you're back into driving. Um, again, you're going to want to make sure that you're looking at a model that fits best with the vehicle that you have. So in some cases you have fleet vehicles and maybe that's easy. You can mass order, you know, a certain type of mounting arm that's going to fit for your Ford F-150 trucks, for example. 
and then you know that it's not going to interfere with your vehicle controls, it's not going to interfere with your airbags. Um, and then if you if you have employees who are using their own vehicles, then you do want to make sure, um, you know, let's say you go with a universal mount that says it's supposed to fit every car. You just want to be careful that it's not going to interfere or impede with the vehicle controls or the console, the buttons on the console, um, or the airbags. So keep that in mind as well. There's different ways that these mounting arms can actually mount too. Again, I'm not an expert in this. However, from what I've seen, I know that you can do ones where they drill into the floor. So maybe that's more likely what you're going to do in a fleet vehicle, but not necessarily what you're going to ask your employees to do to their own vehicles. And then you can also get mounts where they clip onto um, bolts in the floor um, or onto the seats themselves, the passenger seat. Keep in mind as well, you want to just, um, in most cases, there's not really going to be a whole lot of room for your passenger, right? If you're in a big vehicle, like a, a Dodge Caravan, for example, um, there's room for that laptop and the tablet to get mounted in between the two captain seats in the front there, in between the driver and the passenger seat. And so I've been a passenger in a Dodge Caravan where the laptop was mounted in the middle. It didn't affect my space at all. However, when I was in the smaller vehicle, I think it was a Dodge I want to say a Dodge Charger, but you know what? I don't really know my vehicles that well, so I could be wrong, but it was a, it's a Dodge, a small Dodge SUV. Um, and so in that case, I when I was following around these inspectors, I had to sit in the back. There wasn't enough room for me to be a passenger in the front. So something to keep in mind, too, is the type of mount, and, and maybe in that case, mounting a tablet would be a better option because it wouldn't take up as much space, and if you're going to have passengers in the vehicle, you would have the room to do so. Um, so again, I think it's important to make sure that you're investing in a good quality docking station and considering these variables, right? You don't want to just go and purchase, um, oh, I need a laptop mount, I'm going to get this one because it's called a laptop mount or a vehicle mount, right? You, you do want to just make sure that you're asking those questions before you buy. Trialing things is always a good thing. I'm a big fan of trialing things before you buy. Something else you want to consider is the type of laptop. So again, we've been talking a lot about whether or not a laptop or a tablet would work. And I mean, you can even get laptops now that are tablet style, right? Where they, you can use the screen as a touchpad like a tablet. And then you, I think you can turn the keyboard on and off. I haven't actually used one of these yet. Um, but you, you want to be careful. Um, think about where your employees or yourself, where you're going to be driving. So for some of these, for some of the um, bylaw enforcement, for example, when I was following them around, sometimes they're driving, or even the trades people, they're driving almost like off-roading. So jump, driving on pretty bumpy terrain. And laptops, especially if you, uh, well, some more so than others, are made more of a plastic composition. Uh, and so bumping around might not be very good for your laptop. It could cause it to restart. It could cause damage to the hard drive. I don't even know. But bumping in general for a laptop is not really a good thing. I know that you can get more rugged types of laptops and tablets. And so that might be something to consider as well if you're going to be, if your workers are going to be out in the field and in the field like really rough terrain. Um, same if they're going to be using them, if the weather is going to be a factor, uh, I don't know how long if the if the vehicle is going to be or if the um, yeah if the laptop's going to stay in the vehicle while it's turned off and it's minus minus thirty degree weather. Um, again, something to consider: the size of the screen, whether or not it's a touch screen, lighting isn't always great. I mean, the newer the laptop or the tablet that you get, the better the I'm finding the screen quality. They have a lot less glare so it makes them easier to see when you're outside but again the size of the screen the work that you're asking the employees to do if you're asking them to work on really small spreadsheets for example and then on a small little 13 inch screen you know that can be pretty tough and that's not going to help even if they've got um, the laptop or the screen at a good height for viewing they may still be leaning forward to see the screen just because the font and whatnot is so small okay just checking to see if there's any other questions. Okay, great. I don't think I've missed anything so far. Um, and I'm assuming the sound and everything has been good this whole way through because nobody has flagged me for that as well. So, okay, I think those are some other things that are good reminders. Um, and then moving along, we've got, uh, oops, some of these ergonomic solutions, and I, I kind of use the word solutions usually because 
loosely because really this is like a solution would be making a change that you're working in in good or neutral posture, right? So as this person is sitting here, right? Their spine is in a natural curvature, their neck is looking straight, there's no twisting, their shoulders are relaxed and close to the body, elbows are roughly 90 degrees, the wrists are straight. Okay, now when you're working on a laptop and when you're working on a laptop in a vehicle, it really is impossible with current design to get it, to get into this good posture. So when I say solutions, these are more, um, trying to make the best of a not so great situation. <laughs> so for your workers, for yourself, you wanna make sure that you're aware of your posture if you're being conscientious of it. So knowing, can I twist a little less? Can I sit up a little straighter? Uh, how often have I been sitting here twisted? Maybe I can try to break up my work tasks. So um, maybe I can enter my notes after every time I go to a site, right? Maybe I can spend five minutes and I can type in my notes as opposed to stockpiling and having to spend half an hour twisted. Uh, maybe I can get out of the vehicle and I can stop at a coffee shop, for example, and I can uh, do some of my work there. So then I'm not twisting. Maybe I'm still not at a great height for my keyboard's not perfectly at my elbow height, um, but definitely I'm not twisting. It's a little bit more comfortable. It gives me the chance to get out of my vehicle. So being aware of your posture, limiting how much time you spend in those awkward postures, trying to move, all are gonna help to reduce your risk of injury or discomfort that could be associated with this. Taking breaks when necessary, so again, like that coffee shop example is great. Um, rotating tasks, so again, trying to break up how you do your administrative or your data entry work. Um, and then really trying to get into this desktop computer mode whenever possible. So trying to avoid how much time you really do spend on the laptop. And again, whether it's in the vehicle or not, um, working in this desktop computer setup is really the ideal. That is what standards are. Um, Sometimes you might find that you're able to use an external mouse. Sometimes you can, you know, you might get creative. Maybe maybe looking down at the laptop monitor isn't something that really bothers you, but you hate using the touchpad mouse, and so maybe your focus then is on how can I use a regular mouse, a full size or, a, you know, a wireless mouse would be a good option. You've got less cords. Maybe you can set it on the console, and you find that that helps you with any shoulder discomfort or maybe even your neck discomfort. Great. That would be a good solution. Um, Maybe if you are, maybe your vehicle's in a pickup truck, maybe um, when you get out of sight, maybe you're actually able to take your laptop out and set it on the tailgate of your truck. Still not really a fabulous height, maybe you can set it on a cooler or a toolbox or something to raise it up to a, a good height, but again, you're varying your posture from how you would be sitting twisted in the vehicle. So, you know, at least we're moving, at least we're changing the posture or the degree of the bad angles and the twisting. Um, and it could also be that when you're getting out of your vehicles for whatever you're doing, that you're taking that opportunity to stretch, being conscientious and making that effort to do some stretches. So really a stretch should be in the opposite direction of what you've been doing. So if you've been sitting a whole ton, then even just doing a simple stretch where you stand up and reach overhead, that's kind of stretching your back in the opposite of the opposite position of what it's been doing. That can do wonders to kind of get the blood flowing and to relax those muscles if they are feeling tense. Um, similarly, if you've been twisting a whole ton to the right, getting out and doing a stretch where you lean or you know do a gentle twist to the left um, can be a good way to kind of help mitigate any discomfort that might be starting on, on the right side. Most importantly, don't wait until you're actually feeling pain before you start changing your habits. All of this stuff should be done before you start feeling pain and discomfort. So, um, you know, something that I actually find really helpful when I do any kind of office assessment, actually, or computer assessment, whether it be in a vehicle, whether it be um, in a desktop computer in a traditional cubicle, is to take a picture of the person working, um, trying to do it almost when they're unsuspect. Not, I mean, you don't want to surprise somebody. If you can do it unsuspectingly where they're in a really natural um, posture, like where they don't know that they're not trying to sit in a posture because they know you're taking a picture, that's always ideal. If you can get a picture, like a profile picture from the side, um, then it's you can show it to the person because sometimes when you are sitting there working, you don't necessarily know what your posture is. Maybe you think like you look like. Maybe you think you look like the person in the picture here on the screen, um, but you might have a little bit more of a hunch in your neck or your shoulders or your back. And 
somebody taking a picture of you from the side can help you to identify where you might need to make some changes. And it might even help to get you to really support why you need to get out of the vehicle and stretch a little bit more. It's like, oh, I didn't think my posture was that bad. So anyways, picture. Picture can do wonders in some cases. Other considerations. So um, again, when we're talking about different vehicles, I already mentioned that there are different mounts for different vehicles. And uh, sometimes you might find a universal mount, but just make sure that that actually is going to work. So some companies have fleet vehicles, and maybe it's one type of vehicle that they have throughout the company, but maybe they have two or three, and they have the option of choosing. So you want to make sure that you're getting a mount that's going to work for each of those. And again, looking at what's going to be the most sturdy. Again, you don't want your laptop shaking while you're driving or uh, bumping too much. So again, you're taking into account the different sized vehicles and the different sized individuals. So having different vehicles is, is always handy. If you if your fleet of vehicles is cars, you might find your really tall people aren't as comfortable. Um, and if having a a fleet of vans um, gives everybody the space, but maybe it's kind of overkill because you don't actually need to transport a whole lot of storage. Um, but it, you know, it gives the tall users lots of leg room. So that's why I know uh, some, some companies definitely have some different options when it comes to fleet vehicles. So you're thinking about the type of work that they're doing, whether or not they have to transport passengers or guests or clients or whoever it might be, whether or not they need to store stuff in the back, and then. Um, you know, something I haven't mentioned at all, it's not really an ergonomic factor, but when you do a, when you do a Google search for laptops and vehicles and like 90% of the results that you're going to get back have to do with um, laptops being stolen from vehicles or like identity theft or people hacking into a laptop to get access, you know, so you think about a lot of police officers, for example, use laptops in their vehicles and the type of information that would be stored on there. So again, um, Maybe that's more of an extreme case, but if you're going to have people using your employees using laptops and vehicles or tablets, make sure that you're thinking about the security. So, you know, are they actually locked to the mounting station? Is the vehicle like it? Does it get stored out of sight when the person's not in the vehicle? Just other little things to consider, not necessarily from an ergonomic standpoint, but you know, practicality and usability here. Okay, let me just take a moment here. Um, if you have any questions, now's the time. Type them in. We are coming close to the end here, so hopefully I've answered the questions that have come in. I don't see any new questions posted. So if you have any other questions so far, please, again, let me know. And I wanted to give you just some kind of takeaway tips for next steps. Um, I think really you want to make sure that you're assessing your workplace for relevancy. So maybe everything that I've talked about doesn't really apply because maybe you only have two people who are wanting to take their laptop. Maybe you have already done many of these steps and and whichever. But you're wanting to assess your workplace for relevancy. Make sure, you know, what elements of what I talked about today are actually going to apply. And importantly, you're going to want to evaluate your equipment and your vehicles. So looking at the tasks that your workers are doing, look at the laptops or the tablets that they already have. Are they going to work in vehicles? Right? You know, is, are they going to be sturdy enough? Um, what type of vehicles do we have? Are we using company fleet vehicles where we do have the options to, you know, bolt right into the floor, for example, or are we asking employees to modify their personal vehicles? Um, you know, because if that's the case and it's going to impede the passenger seat, uh, that could be a factor, you know, when they're taking the vehicle home to their family for the evenings and weekends, right? Little things like that. Uh, little things, that's actually a pretty big deal. Um, and then this is, there's so many important things to consider, but I mean, you want to make sure too that if you are going to be, whether it's an option or it's required for an employee to, to use their vehicle as an office and use their computer and their tablet there, you're going to want to make sure that you've got some policies and or guidelines in place, right? So making sure that they know, and this should be a given, I don't know if we even need to mention this, but you know, you're not using that laptop or tablet while driving. You, know, you should be pulled over into a safe location so that we're not being a part of this distracted driving um, craze. And that might come into the safe driving techniques training. It could be, in, as a part of that as well, is talking about how to adjust your vehicle, um, how to adjust the laptop mount, making sure that people know how to use the equipment that they're now given in their vehicle. And importantly, too, if you are going to do a mounting option, making sure that your vehicle maintenance, part of that inspection is going to be looking at the mount and the bracket, making sure everything's secure. 
educating your team is going to be a big deal just to make sure again that there's buy-in that they're working as safely as possible letting them know what some of the risks are you know twisting isn't good for your body we know that um, and what can we do about it so you know we can we can try to take breaks we're encouraging you to do that we're encouraging you not to spend a ton of time on your laptop and your vehicle whatever your policies and guidelines are that's what you're going to be educating on and then make sure you're monitoring and following up again you don't want um, as much as you think carrying a laptop or a tablet is going to make your workers more productive or more efficient, at the same time, we don't want to increase injuries or the risk of injuries because then we're going to have people off, we're going to have claims, whatever it might be, and definitely <laughs> we've gone the opposite direction. We, our workers are not more productive and efficient because now they're injured and now it's you know a headache and a nightmare for our claims management team and, and whatnot. So operating a laptop in a vehicle has several risks attached to it. So make sure you're carefully evaluating those risks. Make sure that using a laptop or a tablet in a vehicle is the right fit for your workplace. And then try to minimize as many of those risks as possible so that you're really trying to optimize the comfort and safety of your employees uh, or yourself if that's who we're talking about as well. Okay. So any questions? Um, it is, well, let's see, let me check my clock here. I've got about 10 to 11. So we've got a few minutes here. We can open the, the chat bar up here to any questions. Um, and I will stay on right until 11 o'clock if anybody has any questions. If you do need to go, that's fine. What I should also mention at the beginning is that we record all of our webinars. So if you wanted to review anything in this webinar or if you wanted to share the webinar, we will have it, the recording posted on our YouTube channel um, shortly after this webinar is posted. Um, just when I'm done, I have to click convert and then I'll post it up. So probably need to give me at least an hour and then I'll have it up and ready to share. Okay, while I'm waiting for any of you to type in any questions, I will also mention next month's webinar or here's my contact information but let's talk about next month's webinar um, so next month we have uh, a completely brand new topic we've never done a webinar on this topic before assessing hand tools from an ergonomic perspective we've had lots of requests from people who have attended our webinar saying hey you know what about tool use what about some of our trades workers what about um, you know a lot of our, our line employees um, we've We've never done a webinar on this before, so we're pretty excited to be offering this. This will be in August, August 23rd. So assessing hand tools. So what to look for when you're selecting a hand tool? What are some things that you can should consider um, from an ergonomic perspective? So we're talking about grip. We're talking about weight. We're talking about you know the diameter of the handle. Those types of things should be pretty interesting. So hopefully you can join us for that. Registration, of course, is online. All right, we've got a quiet bunch today. You know what? I bet you it's because it's summer holidays, so that's no problem. We don't have a lot of questions coming in, um, but thank you so much for joining us today. Um, again, my name is Sarah Snabel. I'm one of the co-owners of Pro Ergonomics. I'm a certified professional ergonomist. Here is my contact information. In case you think of a question after the fact, by all means, uh, please send me an email. Uh, or call, give me a call, that's fine. I'm happy to help out in any way that I can, even if it's just sharing some experiences um, that I've had with some other clients, you know, how, I've, how we've helped with their um, mobile offices. So hope you have a great day. It looks like a beautiful July day out there, and uh, hopefully we'll see you at our next webinar. Take care. <laughs>